Hello everyone, I'm Brajinder from fluffyclouds.blog. Today we will be discussing about uh, how you can harness the power of Oracle's web application firewall uh, with the VMware workloads. So we will be discussing about the architecture, we'll discuss about the configurations, and I will give you a live demonstration of how you can integrate uh, your web application running on a VMware environment with the OCI WAF, and we will showcase all the capabilities of the WAF in this video. So what is a WAF? The OCI WAF is a PCI compliant reverse proxy that will inspect your HTTP traffic. Now there are two versions of WAF available in OCI. The first one is a load balancer WAF, and the other one is an edge WAF. Now the load balancer WAF is a service that you enable on top of your load balancer, whereas Edge WAF is a POP architecture. As a part of this presentation, we will be focusing more on the Edge WAF, and we will briefly touch upon the features of a load balancer WAF as well. Now the rules in the Edge WAF are based around the OWASP defined vulnerability classes and also HTTP RFC compliance. Now, there are several layers of security that are provided by uh, the Edge WAF. You can enable access control based on your geolocation, specific IP addresses, and also some HTTP requests. So you can block specific type of requests based on headers and some characteristics. Now, Edge WAF utilizes dynamic threat intelligence from multiple sources like WebRoot and BrightCloud to block access from uh, known IP addresses, uh, known bad IP addresses. Now, EdgeWaf also has a very powerful bot management feature where you can enable JavaScript challenges, human interaction challenges, or you can throw captchas on certain number of tries. The WAF proxy nodes also protect you from uh, volumetric DDoS attacks, so you can configure rate limiting on your edge nodes, which means that you can define how many requests per IP address will my edge nodes receive before they start dropping the traffic. Uh, so we briefly touched upon the load balancer WAF as well, but there are certain features that are very specific to edge nodes. So certain features like custom signatures, like caching capabilities and bot management are only available in edge WAF as of now. So next we have our edge nodes. Noting that these reside within the OCI ecosystem, but they are outside your tenancy. Now using the smart DNS routing, the origin requests are routed to the closest WAF edge processing node. In this case, I'm only, show, only showing three. However, there are edge WAF in all significant geographic locations. Now assuming that your application is only presented over HTTPS, the Initial SSL offloading is performed by these edge nodes. Uh, this is useful as uh, edge nodes SSL stack are hardened and regularly patched against known SSL vulnerabilities. Now this also means that your application load balancers are not burdened with unnecessary SSL handshake from bots or malicious requests as these will not be forwarded to your, to your load balancer by the edge nodes. Now this is important should you come under any HTTP based DDoS attack as you can exhaust the allocated CPU resources through SSL negotiations and renegotiations alone. Now it is also important to note that if you select HTTPS as your edge node, the next hop in this case, uh, your load balancer should also be supporting HTTPS traffic. Now, in my case, I've got a very simple uh, web application, which is running in my VMware environment, running in OCDS, and all my WAF policies are protected by IAM policies, which allows access to only specific authorized operators. So now that we have established what is a WAF and what are the capabilities, let's jump straight into the demo. So I'm going to start with a very simple topology where I have a WordPress application running in my VMware environment. Now this WordPress is connected to the internet using a NAT gateway. So in this demo, I'm going to 
layer this WordPress website with my OCA load balancer and I will attach an edge web on top of it. Okay, now let's add an OCI load balancer to my WordPress website. So this is how the topology will look like after I add my load balancer. Load balancer will give me a public IP address for my website. It's a fairly straightforward process where I will give it a name, uh, let's say a demo app to my load balancer, and I will then select the networking for it. So VCN is what gives you the networking. So I will select what will be the IP address for it, which subnet is it going to be deployed under. I'm going to choose next and uh, we will go next. So we will come back to it where we will configure the listeners, but I'm just going to add a certificate. Now the certificate can be directly uploaded to the load balancer and you can also use a built-in service within Oracle Cloud to store your certificates. I'm going to enable logging. Um, now that the load balancer service has been enabled, I am going to do some configuration where I will be adding the backend of my WordPress website uh, to this load balancer. So I will be backing it up with an IP address. So I will mention the IP address of my WordPress. Usually it takes a few seconds for the backend set to go healthy and I will now configure the listener. So I will put an HTTPS listener uh, for my WordPress. So let's specify HTTPS only. I will be using SSL and I need to specify the certificate that I just uploaded and I will save the changes. So now that the listener has been created, let's go back and verify our load balancer configuration. You can see that uh, the logging is enabled on the load balancer. HTTPS listener is created and the backend set has been configured and it is looking healthy. And now we have a public IP address allocated to my website. So I will now access my website using uh, the public IP address. You can see that the website is now browsable with the public IP. Okay, now let's jump uh, straight into the WAF configuration. So you can see uh, that our WAF architecture is a pop architecture with multiple edge nodes out there. And the configuration is a fairly straightforward configuration where we will be going to identity and security. The first thing we need to do is create a certificate. Unfortunately, it does not uh, tie down to the certificate service within OCI. So you have to upload your public uh, key and uh, and a private uh, key there. So I will be using the same certificate as I used on my load balancer in my case. So you can see that the certificate has now been added. It's a valid certificate issued by Zero SSL. Let's go back to our web application firewall. So identity and security. I will go to web application firewall here. Let's create a WAF policy. So I will be using a legacy WAF, which is also called the WAF version one or edge WAF. I will give it a name and provide my domain name, which is vigilantvoid.com. I will be providing my additional uh, domain name, origin name, which has to be unique. Uh, and I will also provide the load balancer IP address, the public IP address provided by my load balancer in the URI. So let's verify we'll go back okay it looks like my edge WAF has been enabled uh, let's go to some of the settings so i'm going to enable the https support for this and i will also enable the redirection from http to https 
Uh, let's talk about the protection rules. So these are like I was telling you that these are OWASP uh, standard protection rules. You can put these protection rules in the detect mode and you can also put them in the blocking mode as well. The interesting thing is that your WAF will also provide you recommendations uh, depending upon what kind of uh, traffic it analyzes. So it has a specific period. I think the default is a 10 days period where it will observe your traffic and then uh, it will recommend you some of these uh, rules. So you can uh, see that uh, this is a 10 days recommendation period, but you can also drop it down to five days. Access rules are uh, provide you capabilities like geofencing your website. So in my demo, I'm going to uh, specify country as a Japan, and I will uh, specify the blocking message. So I want to geofence my website. I want to make sure that it doesn't uh, serve the pages uh, if you try to open it from the Japan. And you can specify your custom error message as well, a custom blocking page, uh, so that it's not confusing, like why are the pages getting blocked. And since it's a WordPress, I don't serve any of these HTTP methods, so I'm going to put them in the blocking mode as well. I will be enabling the bot management features. I'm enabling the JavaScript challenge. Uh, again, you can have your custom error messages specified. I will be enabling the human interaction challenge as well. So it uh, human interaction challenge will uh, will figure out if there is a non-human kind of request based on mouse, keyboard, and a lot of other factors. You can uh, have a good bot whitelisting as well. Uh, this is a list managed by Oracle. So I'm going to enable Google and Apple bot there. Uh, it also provides you caching capability. So you can cache some of your pages on the edge nodes, but I am going to skip that section. So if we go back to our uh, original diagram you will see that we have enabled access control we have enabled bot management and the protection rules so this is done let's uh, quickly verify all the settings you can see that uh, the web origin uri is in place and um, all my rules are in place like cross-site scripting php injection and other things uh, let's verify our access control you can see that uh, the condition is Japan, and I'm also going to do a get, put, and post uh, in the blocking mode. Human interaction and JavaScript challenge is enabled. And uh, this will give you a C name so that um, uh, your web pages are redirected to the WAF and not the load balancer. I've already done a DNS push in my case where my traffic will now be redirecting uh, to the web application firewall. Okay, now the web has been configured. Let's verify some of the features that we have enabled for access control and bot management. So I'm going to use a custom Python script uh, and I will be bombarding my website with the requests. So I will try to open the pages in a loop um, of 20 times. So let's see if uh, it is allowed with my policy in place. So you can see that after the fifth interaction, it has thrown an error message that uh, access is denied. And you can go to the logs and you will be able to verify that uh, uh, the pages were blocked. Now let's try to send multiple requests from the same IP address. So I'm going to just uh, throw in a number of clicks on my website and you will see that uh, it has thrown me a block page with the human interaction challenge. Uh, now that the bot management has been tested, let's also test the access management. Remember, we had put a condition in place where I don't want to serve uh, my pages in Japan. So I'm going to use a local uh, proxy browser and I will try to browse this website from Japan. You can see that I was unable to do that. Uh, the website has your restriction enabled and you will be able to see. Okay, now I'm going to attack my website uh, with, uh, with the GET request. So I'm going to bombard my pages using one of the open source applications out there. 
So I have uh, run about 500 threads for 60 seconds and uh, I will be flooding my website with a GET request. So you can see that the GET request uh, was blocked uh, by my VEF because I have the policy in place. Now the biggest challenge of any WAF deployment out there is not the configuration, but the operationalization of the WAF. How do you get the visibility of how many rules are getting engaged? How many requests are getting blocked? And what are the source countries for my website traffic? Now this is where OCI's observability and management provides you some of the most amazing capabilities of data representation using custom dashboarding. Now let's open the observability and management dashboard by going into ONM console. I will be opening one of the pre-created dashboards. Uh, there are various ways in which you can represent your traffic. So I am, uh, uh, the first table gives me uh, the breakdown of the traffic coming from the source countries. So you can see that um, a representation of uh, how many requests, what percentage of requests were coming from, let's say, Ireland, from uh, Finland, in my case. Um, a lot of this traffic is actually attack traffic. Um, so that's why you will see that uh, the traffic has been bounced from different locations. Uh, you are only limited by your own imagination when it comes to these dashboards. There is a lot that you can represent. Uh, I mean, you can do a top 10 count of um, any metrics like you know traffic coming from top 10 countries. What are the top 10 source IP addresses from where the traffic is coming? So then you can fine tune your policy that maybe you want to block specific countries. Maybe you want to uh, block the traffic coming from specific IP addresses. So similarly, you can see how many requests uh, you received in a day. And then this is the bot management section where uh, you can see how many, what percentage of your requests were blocked by human interaction challenge and how, what percentage was blocked by JavaScript challenge. And then you can also see uh, how many requests, uh, what was the request response? How many 403 did you get? How many 200s did you get? So you can see that a lot of my traffic is denied traffic because it was uh, a deliberate attempt to uh, test the policies. Uh, you can also uh, find out what was the, uh, the request type. Was it a get traffic? Was it a post or a track? So similarly, you, it'll help you fine tune your policies. Now, this is really important section where it will represent uh, what kind of rules were engaged. So you can have a top 10 count and then you can go back and fine tune those policies, maybe put them in the blocking state or in the bypass state. So let's say you want to find out more information. You can always drill down to a specific rule ID where it will give you a lot of information about uh, uh, what was audit message, what was the state, what was the request details. So there's quite a lot of information that you can uh, drill down to. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it was informative and you liked it.